What if I were to tell you, you could be getting five times to 10 times as many dates from apps like Hinge, Bumble, Tinder, Match.com than you're currently getting, simply by making a few small tweaks in your messaging. If you're like most guys, you're absolutely terrible at messaging and you're losing 80 to 90% of your potential dates because of it. And here's the thing, good messaging isn't complicated. It's actually very, very simple. Most of the time when I'm messaging a girl to get her from the app to off of the app, it's four to seven texts and they're not even complicated texts. Every single one has a purpose. Every single one is moving it closer to the outcome. I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do that also in this video. In just a few minutes, I'm gonna to explain to you my online dating strategy that has been working for me for 22 years. Wow, I'm actually quite old, I guess. Yes, it's been working for more than two decades and it gets better every single year, more refined and works better and better. So I'm gonna show you that and then I'm gonna give you an example of me using that exact strategy so you can see it in action. Let me know if this sounds familiar to you. You message a girl for days and days, even weeks and weeks, and you never actually get her phone number, never actually make plans, and then eventually her account goes inactive and she stops messaging you back, or when you do eventually make plans, she says, oh, you know, she's not really ready, or she sees you as more of a friend at this point, or whatever. If that's happened to you, number one, you're doing something very, very wrong. Number two, you're doing the same thing wrong that most guys are doing. This is the result tons of guys are getting in their online messaging. Or how about this? How about you have the entire interaction seem to be going well, the girl seems to like you, but every single time you go to make plans, she goes silent or starts putting up objections or asking a bunch of logical questions that stall the interaction and get you nowhere. That's also very, very typical, and it's an issue that tons of guys run into that keeps them from getting dates and leads to a ton of frustration. Or what about girls constantly just giving you one word answers or non-committal answers and just seemingly never giving you anything to work with where you have to keep generating more conversation and generating more conversation and it feels like you're you know, doing all the work, almost like lifting boulders at a quarry how hard it is and the girl seems to just never give anything back. Again, this is a common frustration almost all guys experience. I'm gonna show you how to avoid all of these and how to move your messaging purposefully forward towards an end result on a continual repeated basis. Let's look into that right now. So let's first dispel the myth that you need to really, really get to know a girl online before you can get her onto a date. That's simply not true for a couple reasons. Number one, the girl is on an online dating app. She has made a commitment to herself that she's putting time and energy and investment into getting this area of her life handled. And actually, if you take a long time and other guys are messaging her faster and getting her on dates faster, one of them is gonna get her out on a date, have a good date with her, and no matter how good your online conversation was, that date is going to trump it. That date is going to matter more than whatever happened online. The point of being online is to get her offline. In fact, with online, there are three things you need to establish. Once you've established those things, it is time to close. And with that in mind, as I teach you my method, the first thing I'm gonna teach you is the very end because everything is designed to make the end as simple and straightforward as possible. So here is my planned final message every time I start messaging a girl. See, when I send that first message, I have in my mind, the last message will be this. And everything I do throughout the entire interaction is designed to make this last message make sense. And the last message is this. Sounds good, my number's this, what's yours? Very, very simple. Simple, direct, to the point. In order for that to be your last message, it means you have to have done a good job with the rest of the interaction. It means you must have created a good enough interaction that that makes sense. And in fact, the sounds good part specifically means you already got the girl agreeing to plans or suggesting plans before you even sent that last message. And again, we're doing this within four to seven messages. So how do we do that? Well, there are three things, like I said, that a girl needs to feel before she's ready to be closed, before she's willing to meet you offline instead of just messaging you online. And those three things are attraction, comfort, and commitment. If she feels those three things have been present in the interaction or are present in her feelings towards you, now she is ready to be closed. So how do we bake that in and what do each of those mean? Well, first of all, attraction means that you are an attractive guy. It means that you are fun. It means that you are in alignment with her vision of what a high value guy is. It means that you are direct, assertive enough that you're moving things forward. And it means that you're not just trying to like kiss her ass and win her over that way. It means you, she views you as a strong individual, worthy of chasing, worthy of her on a value level. Next up, comfort. 
she has to know you at least a little bit before she wants to make plans. Now, when I first started online dating in year 2000, this was huge. This was probably the biggest thing because it was very weird and unusual to do online dating at that time. And everybody was scared that they'd meet like a serial killer online or something like that. Now online dating is extremely mainstream, extremely normal and girls you know, have been on lots of online dates before, so the level of comfort needed is far less, but they still need to know you're not a total weirdo. They still need to know you're a real human being, and they still want to feel like they have some idea of your personality and the details of your life, as opposed to just being this like funny, like glib guy who has no substance behind it. So she wants to feel some level of comfort so she knows that she's not gonna just end up in a weird situation or end up with like a psycho. And then finally, commitment. And this is what I was talking about when I said that you wanna be able to say, sounds good at the start of your last message. The point of commitment is that the nature of the conversation should already be such that you've mentioned plans and she mentioned plans before you're going for the close. You should not be bringing the plans up on the close and you should not be closing out of nowhere. This is one of the main reasons why guys will have what appears to be a good interaction and then they go to close at the end and all of a sudden the girl just ghosts them or goes silent because it's a surprise to her. She's not ready for it. It just seems to come out of nowhere. It kind of takes her off guard or seems like too much pressure all at once. So you want to be bringing up the concept of plans before you actually close. It should not just be in that last closing message. You should not, for example, be closing with something like, hey, you seem pretty cool. Why don't we get together for a date on Tuesday night? when before that you've just been talking about random topics. That's too much, too fast, all at once. So just to reiterate, there are three buckets you need to fill. Attraction, comfort, commitment. On the one hand, if you try to close before you've filled those buckets, you're likely to hear no, get resistance, and other things that will slow down the interaction or possibly cause it to come to a grinding halt and for the girl to just stop messaging you entirely. On the other hand, if you have built those three elements and you don't close, you're wasting time at the very least, and also the interaction is going to start becoming more boring, it'll start losing impact and momentum. And also keep in mind that when girls are messaging online, they're messaging other guys. So the longer you take online, the more likely it is some other guy will go on a date with her first and impress her on the date. So that's another reason why once those buckets are full, you want to close and get to the next step. So by knowing that those are the three buckets you need to fill, you now have a high level understanding of what you're trying to do whenever you're messaging a girl. And that's very important because every single text sequence will be a little different. They're not gonna go exactly according to plan. So I'm about to show you an example where I quickly and efficiently fill these three buckets and then am able to close. One quick note to make the example make more sense. Usually the order will be open, attraction, comfort, commitment, and close. It does not necessarily have to be that order, but you will find that in the majority of cases it will be that order because that keeps it interesting and fun, which keeps her around long enough to build comfort with you and build a commitment with you. It does not have to be in that order. If she shows a strong urge to commit early on, then go ahead and build that commitment and you can build the attraction as you go. Or if she, she wants to have a very comfortable conversation, you mix in just a little bit of attraction, it can happen in that order. But most of the time, I'd say at least 75, 80% of the time, it's gonna be open, attraction, comfort, commitment, close. And that's exactly the structure you're gonna see in this particular example. So let's look at it. So this example is from Hinge, and this is a girl that was in my most compatible, so I had to message her first. So I found this prompt. She said, the way to win me over is witty banter and intelligent conversations. And if you know my personality at all, you know I read that and I thought, hey, that's me. So I wrote something along those lines in order to get her attention and get the conversation started. But I wrote it a little more cleverly. I wrote, I feel like you copied off my paper for this test, winky face. Now, what does this do? First of all, it opens the conversation by being a little bit interesting. And that's very critical to get our attention because girls are ignoring far more guys than they're responding to online, especially in a case like this where she didn't match with you first, right? So she's probably swiping left on you the vast majority of the time. You need to get her attention, you need to get on her radar. So I wanna be a little more interesting. Also, I'm putting in a little bit of attraction here because I'm being a little bit cocky. The fact that I'm being cocky and saying she cheated off my, my test and claiming these things without acting like I'm claiming them. It's a little bit of a cocky assertion, right? So there's an open here, there's a little bit of attraction here, and I'm being a bit interesting. So she says, in this case, we'll both pass the test with flying colors. So she responds, in this case, we'll both pass the test with flying colors. Now this is great for a number of reasons. Number one, she's saying that I have good answers to the test that she's copying off. Two, she's accepting my frame. She's accepting, I put out this playful frame and she's going along with it. And she actually uses the word we. 
The word we is a very powerful word because the very idea that there is a we, there is a you and her as an entity together is already a very strong sign towards commitment, towards comfort, etc. So this is a very positive response from her. So my response is, hmm, perhaps I'll take you for a celebratory drink as long as you don't copy my order and then blindly agree with me on everything all night. So what am I doing here? Well, number one, I'm adding more attraction by the fact that I'm pushing her away or creating a standard for her saying, don't blindly agree with me. You still have a standard to meet as opposed to me trying to convince her I'm good enough or kissing her ass or trying to persuade her like most guys are doing. That's building more attraction. But very importantly, because things are going well, because there's already attraction grant generated by my first message and she's already implying some level of comfort and some level of commitment with me, I'm already seeding the plans. This is my second message and I'm already mentioning the plans. But what am I doing? I'm mentioning them in the negative. If this and this and this happens, we could do plans. I'm not saying please go on a date with me. In fact, I'm saying you would have to earn a date with me. But I'm already mentioning it. I'm already getting that commitment. I'm already mentioning the plans by the second message. So let's see how she responds. So she responds, maybe if you let me order first, I'll blame you for copying me instead. Okay, so this is pretty good in the sense that she's sort of agreeing to the plans or she's playing out the scenario of us being on a date together. And that's the beauty of bringing up the date early on is that you will get that. On the other hand, this is sort of slightly a shit test because the whole frame so far has been the idea that I'm the one that um, is leading and then she's copying me. When she's trying to reverse it, maybe I'm the one copying her. So it's a little bit of a shit test, but it's a shit test that's mostly pretty good. So where are we at here? So we have some level of attraction. We had some comfort and commitment and we still have that, but now I need to generate a little more attraction. I need to be, make sure that that's solidified. So I say only if you have very good taste, cocky line, but I suppose it could be fun to find out. So continuing to proceed forward with the plans, but again, with the idea that we're finding out, not that I'm sure, and the idea that I would only copy her if she had good taste. There's still a standard for her to meet. She's still being appraised as well as me. So she says, I have a tendency to go for the less common items on the menu, so you've been forewarned. Now, what is this? This is possibly another shit test a little bit, but mostly what is this? It's comfort. She's just exchanging facts with me. And once a girl likes you, before she'll make plans, oftentimes she just wants to have a little bit of a factual exchange. She wants to just have a little bit of get to know you. And so I think primarily her instinct here is to just have a little comfort in the conversation. That's what she's kind of emotionally feeling. And that's mostly why she would be writing this text. So then I say, I prefer the tried and true best over the flavor of the month in drinks as well as companions. So perhaps we'll be good in all areas. Now this is a really interesting frame for me to take. What am I saying here? Because she is indicating she wants comfort. One type of comfort a girl can want online is the idea a guy will stick around or the, the fact the guy's genuine and not just looking for sex or not just looking for a one night stand, etc. And so here, because she's looking for comfort in general, I gave her this little symbolic representation of comfort baked into this message. Now, I'm not flat out saying, you know, it won't be a one night stand. I'm not flat out saying I'll be her boyfriend or anything like that, but I'm implying things that are more comfortable because she responded with comfort. But again, I said I prefer the tried and true best, so I'm still challenging her, I'm still giving her a standard to live up to, so there's a little more attraction jump bumped in there. And then so perhaps we'll be good in all areas, there's a little bit of just keeping that idea of commitment, right? I'm still, every message, it still has the plans into it, even if the plans are not the primary thing. So she says, sounds wonderful, what are some of your tried and true favorites in drinks as well as companions? This is a pure comfort seeking message. She's saying, I want factual comfort from you. That's how you should read this. The, the literal text is not so important. The most important part of this is she's looking for a logical answer. She's looking for like some feeling of who I am. So I give a longer answer than I usually would in text. Usually I don't give long text, but again, she's looking for comfort. So it's, it's kind of acceptable in this case. I say, can't say that it's particularly sophisticated, but I like wines that are a little bit sweet and fruity and mixed drinks with champagne. That's completely logical. That has nothing to do with game in terms of like provoking emotions or being high value or anything like that. It's just me giving her facts. And the reason I gave her facts and gave her a little glimpse into some little quirky element of me is because she specifically asked for it in the last message. She's telling me how to game her, basically. She's telling me what she needs in order to feel good about going on a date with me. So if she's gonna tell me I need this in order to feel good about going on a date with you, obviously if I wanna go on a date with her, I should probably give her what she's asking for. And they say, as far as favorite companions, maybe I'll introduce you to some if you prove to be one also. And so again, this challenge of if she proves to be one of my favorite companions, then maybe there's something on the end of it. And so she says, challenge accepted. 
And this is absolutely the right message. What does this message say? It says challenge accepted as in you have enough attraction in me that I'm willing to take on a challenge for you. Positive. Challenge accepted means the comfort you just gave me, I have assessed and I agree with it and I think that's sufficient comfort. And challenge accepted means I accept the challenge of going on a date with you. I accept the challenge of plans. So this last message, it's two words, but it says there's attraction, there's comfort, there's commitment in two words, challenge accepted. Perfect message to be closing off of. So what do I write? The closing message we all expect. Sounds good, my number is number, what's yours? She responds, phone number, looking forward to sharing some more fun convos with you. Absolutely the response you want. We have agreed a plan, we've agreed we like each other, we've exchanged numbers, we're ready to get to the next step and plan the date. So hopefully you enjoyed that high level view into online dating and what you're trying to do, as well as hopefully you learned a lot from that example. Obviously this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are lots of eventualities that can come up, different objections a girl can give, different hesitations a girl can give, different ways the conversation can get derailed. Never mind what you need to do once you've gotten the number to actually plan the date. If you want a lot more information about all of that, check out my full online messaging guide. It's at the link below and in the description. It's gonna go much more into depth about this model as well as many more examples of me applying it so that you'll see all the different iterations. The goal of that is so that no matter what a girl will ever send you, you're gonna know exactly what to message back to get her from match to phone number to date. So check it out at the link below and I will see you on the next video.